morning. There we go. I think I shut myself off. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. You're welcome. A beautiful day except for the humidity. <laughs> but hey, we're, we're in May. It's going to get worse, unfortunately. So welcome to all the visitors here um, that we have today. Thanks for visiting with us and joining us in worshiping our Lord. Let us begin our service with Savior like a shepherd lead us. tender care in your pleasant pastures feed us for our useful prayer blessed Jesus blessed Jesus you have brought us we are yours blessed Jesus blessed Jesus you have bought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us. Be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. You have promised to receive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and in his stead, 
I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus birth we praise and bless you Father your holy name we sing our thanks for your great glory Lord God our heavenly Son, we pray, O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry, where you in power are seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. First reading is from uh, Acts 20, starting at verse 17. Now from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and call, called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears 
and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, in teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Revelation 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and where have they come? I said, I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, 
and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. The text for today is our psalm, Psalm 23. Now I know today's Mother's Day, and I'm sure all you mothers would agree that every day was sunny in your life after you had children, right? I see the looks. <laughs> My mother had five boys. <laughs> yeah, I heard the I heard the groans. <laughs> you know, we lived in a small town, and there was a lot of times when we. Well, I remember when we first moved there. My mother heard stuff before we even got home. <laughs> Things don't always go well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How could David have said these words? As I read the scriptures, David showed that indeed he was much in need of want. He had much want. God had given to him the house of Saul and the houses of Israel and Judah. But David proved to be a man in want. He wanted a break from the battlefield. 
He wanted the bathing beauty Bathsheba. I mean, you get this image. If you've ever seen the movie, the Bible, you see David up high and he's looking down. And it's like, whoa. You just imagine. It's like, hey. <laughs> I mean, he was enthralled with the Bathsheba. And then he wanted the evidence of his sin gone. David was very much in need of want. Now, I'm sure we don't think the same way. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, just like our sin to be gone. Don't want anybody to see it. So we hide it, just like David. There is only one who have, could have said these words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus traveled the one path of which no one ever wants to travel. The one the Father lays out for us. He walked the Father's path, perfectly following the Father's will for the sake of the Father's name. Jesus did not lack. He ate only the Father's word. After fasting in Matthew, Matthew 4, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And then Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He was tempted. There was his reply. Jesus kept to the Father's path, even when it passed through the valley of the shadow of death. The paths of righteousness did lead through the valley of death. Jesus was forsaken by the Father. He was the lamb led to slaughter. Yet he kept his eyes fixed on the joy before him. In Hebrews 12, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thus he still did not want. And at the end of the path through the valley, Jesus entered into the Father's house the right hand on the throne of God. The table is the feast of victory. For Jesus has returned to the Father's house and shall abide with him forever. Jesus knows the flock. He knows us. Because he himself had been a sheep, been a lamb. He has experienced for himself the faithful care the Father gives. Since Jesus has learned this from his suffering, the Father has made him the great shepherd of the sheep, of us. He will tenderly shepherd you. The Lord was David's shepherd, leading him on the path through the valley into the house, into his house. <laughs> you know, if I say David strayed a lot, no, he jumped off the cliff with his sin he didn't just stray a little he was like off the cliff 
and then he tried to hide it all. I mean, he sleeps with Bathsheba. She gets pregnant. And what does he do? He comes with, up with a plan to get rid of her husband Uriah. To hide his sin. Thus, completely veering off the, off the path. Not trusting in his Lord and Savior. Not seeking his forgiveness. But seeking his way to quote unquote fix it. You know we see this in the world. We've seen this in the world for a very long time. We want to fix stuff. But there's only one person that can fix it. And that's Jesus. David suffered terrible want that the father never intended for him. Death of an infant son. Suffering. probably some things we don't even know what was going on in his head the the shame that he had sometimes we have that same thing maybe our sin is not as great as David's but if you go reading through the text you go reading through scriptures, different part of scriptures that account for what was going on. You notice something really, really interesting is as soon as David confesses, man, it's like everything is okay. And you, you get that in the reading. It's all all right. His, his trajectory has changed. His attitude has changed. All, all because of the Lord, he seeked the Lord, sought the Lord for his forgiveness. And the same with us. Our Lord is waiting for us. You know, we can look at the text in part of, okay, take it as a warning. Don't go, don't go into the shadow of death. In other words, in your sin, don't try to hide it. But ask for his forgiveness. Because our, he already knows. It's kind of like in Genesis when, you know, I always love this in Genesis when after they had sinned, God, God says, hey, where are you? <laughs> I don't know if you guys find that funny, but I, I just find that hilarious. He knows where they are. <laughs> and the same with us. He knows what we've done. And if you look in our, in our Bible study afterwards, we're going to kind of get into this. It's, it's somewhat of a basic thing of the Lutheran faith. But if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Or another way of putting it, if we say we're not sinners, we call God a liar. Stand back. <laughs> Here comes the lightning. <laughs> Don't want to call God a liar. But he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us. Just like that. Forgives us. And that's what he did with David. Forgiving him. You know, we will all pass through that shadow of death. We will all die. That's, that's you know, I hate to tell you, but that's a guarantee. We're not going to make it out alive. But David is sitting with Jesus right now because of the forgiveness he has for what, for what God did for him. Because he was faithful. Yeah, was David a sinner? Oh, yeah. We want to put him up here, but he was a, 
He probably committed more sins than any one of us in this room. If you want to rate, we probably really shouldn't rate sins, but if we did. As far as I know, all you guys only have one wife. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but Jesus is your shepherd. He leads us through the path from the valley. From those places that are, well, like 2020, 21, and hey, 2022. Look at all, everything that's going on. But he is with us. Remain faithful to him. He will guide us through it. Take David as an example. You are saved. You are forgiven. Okay? You already, you already are reconciled with God. Okay? So I'm talking about sanctification. Don't get in the messy stuff. Try to stay out of there. And when you don't, ask for his forgiveness. I'm going to say it blunt, bluntly. We're kind of in a mess in this country. One of the courts hasn't even made a decision, and all of a sudden people already think they made a decision. And now we got another separation with us. So we need to be careful we don't fall into sins on either side of the issue. I don't know what's going to happen in the end of this, this court decision. But I know it's, gonna, it's a valley. It's a valley right now. Our Lord and our Savior will be with us through it all. Because he has given us forgiveness of sins. It's probably the closest you're going to get me to talking about that issue in the pulpit. I'll say it again. There is forgiveness when we repent. You know, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes we think, God, what are you doing? What is going on? Think of the wars we've been through. Think of, uh, think of the COVID. Think of now of everything that's going on right now. Just turn on your TV, turn on the news. You might think, oh my word, what are you doing? What path are you taking us? We might think God is leading us down the wrong path. And then when we think that way, we're, we're more than likely to veer off that path. To seek our own solutions. And that, gets, that always gets us into trouble when we seek our own solutions. God had the solution. Has the solution. And that's Jesus. We know this by faith. We know we will be with him forever. By our faith in Jesus. Knowing that he suffered, died, and rose on the third day. Knowing that he forgives us our sins as far as the east is from the west. When we repent. We know that by faith. And one day we're going to know it by experience. We're going to see it. It's going to be. I don't want to say it's going to be real because it's real now. But we're going to see it. We're going to, we're going to physically experience. We're going to be there. And then everything's going to make sense. 
But for now, live by faith. Let him guide you by faith. As the world goes crazy and, you know, and I've got something to tell you. This world's been going crazy ever since the fall into sin. But keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep hearing his word that accuses us by the law and forgives us. We see that sweet gospel that he has died for us and our sins are no more. And we will be sitting with him at the banquet. Who wants to go to a party? I got one. (laughs) There we go. I mean, that's what it is. It's a banquet. We always think, well, it's just, okay, we'll just, you know, we got to be proper and everything else. No, it's a banquet. It's a feast. It's a celebration. For you visitors, I'm a PK. I was raised in a Lutheran church. I know, I know how we are as Lutherans. <laughs> I was brought up. But it's, it is a celebration. And we will be with him forever. Let the Lord guide you. And yeah, sometimes he's going to guide you through the shadow of death. But at times he's got a reason of that for us to suffer. That our faith would be strengthened. Because when you suffer, when things go wrong... And it seems like the devil has taken over the world and and everything's going crazy. Where do you go as Christians? Where do you go? To Jesus. Exactly. So the more the devil goes wild and everything else, what does it do? He's chasing us right back into the arms of Jesus. (laughs) Funny how that works. Funny how that works. And we will be guests at the royal banquet because he's ever increasing our faith, building our faith so that we can sustain, that we can win the race. He has gone before you through death and his mercy and goodness remain your rear guard. How many, how many military people we got here? One, two. Were you military? No? <laughs> Not that you know of. You know, a rear guard. What's a rear guard? He's got your back. They're watching. They're watching for you. God is our rear guard. He's, he's watching out that we're not going to get attacked and killed and drug off. He's got us. He's got our back. So the sun has gone ahead of us to prepare a place. Since the good shepherd has given to you his death and life, no good thing will you lack. Now you know it by faith, and one day you will know it by experience. His path leads through the valley into the Father's house. And there you will never depart. Amen. Let us rise for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son purchased us with his own blood. 
And he now leads us through the gate of death to our eternal home with you. As the sheep of his fold inspire us to hear his voice gladly and to follow him steadfastly through every tribulation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, shepherd of souls, your servant Paul entrusted his flock to the care of faithful men, urging them to follow him in the way of Christ. Bless your churches here today under the care of your pastors and instill in them all wisdom, fortitude, humility, and grace. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you have provided us with the gifts of family. Bless those who have shown us as the mother's love and nurturing our lives from childhood. Bless and protect all mothers with child and those who have suffered miscarriage or the death of a child. And all those who have yearned for a child and live with the pain of this unfulfilled longing. Lord, in your mercy, compassionate Lord, you will not allow any power or enemy to triumph over your saving purpose or snatch your lambs from your hand. Give us wise and faithful leaders who will govern in our land according to your law and defend the lives of the unborn, the orphaned, the widow, and the aged. Bless all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they may not hinder your purpose. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you have not forgotten us in our afflictions or abandoned us in our weaknesses. Deliver the sick and suffering according to your will and give your comfort to the dying and the sick, especially to those who have requested our prayers, including Marty, Reverend Dennis Glander, Reverend Juan Gonzalez, Karen, Kevin, Rebecca, Barbara, and Terry, and for all those that we name in our hearts. Guard us against despair and grant us patience in the days of our trouble as we await your perfect healing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, enthroned in heaven, you gather your saints into the shelter of your presence, making them white in the blood of the Lamb. Keep us faithful throughout our lives here and bring us through death to join them in the ceaseless praises of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look down upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So again, happy Mother's Day. Uh, let's see here. Short announcements. Uh, the flowers this morning are given by Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Uh, this morning uh, for a happy Mother's Day for you all. There are also roses if you didn't get one uh, for the mothers. Where are they? Yeah, right out here in a basket on the table here. Um, anniversaries. Joy and Don Kobaki. 50 years. <laughs> Uh, 
let's see here. Uh, Bible study afterwards. Um, join us. We're gonna we're gonna have some fellowship. I know who who did um, snacks. Intimates. <laughs> hey, intimates are good. My mother always bought intimates. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So jo- join us. Um, we'll be talking about the problem. Who likes talking about problems? But then we're going to talk about the cure. (laughs) The solution, whatever you want to call it, the solution. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, So Bible study Wednesday. Join us Wednesday. We're in a, I can't remember if it's four part or six part. I I forget now. But we're, we're talking about the book of Revelation. The book that you either want to get in there or you want to stay away from it. But it's probably not what you think. So come join us. Uh, movie night next Sunday at 6. What's the movie? Uh, we doing God's Not Dead 3. There we go. God's Not Dead 3. There we go. So join us at 6, thir- uh, ah, six o'clock for popcorn. Uh, what do you call it? Rupert Floats? And some fellowship. Get there at 5.30? Well, yeah, if you want Ripper Yeah, if you want Ripper Flow, get there at 5.30. Uh, let's see. I don't, anything else I'm missing? Church Council? Where's, oh, I, I, boy, I went right over that one. Church Council next Sunday. Um, plan on being there if you're, you're on the Church Council. I'm going to give a little commercial. If you've ever thought of serving, pray about it. Pray about it. Because we're supposed to elect new officers eventually here pretty soon. So pray about it. Maybe God's kind of nudging you a little bit. I don't, I don't know. But either you see me or Dick, if you're, if you're in any way interested in being involved in the council. So, Pastor, all yes. Are for all ladies. All ladies. Yeah, all ladies. So enjoy the day. Go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.